Hey guys! Hey guys! We're going on, on the, the road! road. <laughs> <laughs> Violated community guidelines is going on the road! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hand. <laughs> guys, we're doing a live show at the Brea Improv on May 18th. Tickets go on sale April 19th Tuesday. at 10 a.m. Pacific time. <laughs> and please, we're at Coachella right now, and it's just a lot. It's very overwhelming. <laughs> Gonna fart. No, I'll pee. All right. Bye, guys. Get our tickets. <laughs> please come see us. Welcome back to Violating, Violating Community, Community Guidelines. Guidelines. I'm Sarah Shower. And I'm Brittany Broski. And today we're going to be talking about viral, viral challenges. challenges. Like the ice bucket challenge and so on and so Cinnamon forth. Cinnamon challenge. Crochet challenge. Butthole wax challenge. <laughs> planking. <laughs> <laughs> we never planking. That was really a challenge. That was just like a trend. Was, I thought it was a challenge. Who's challenging you to plank? <laughs> <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> but that is like the, the height of like millennial creativity. If yeah. you just lay face down motionless. How funny would that be? <laughs> That's so fucking funny, you man. You know what? To the millennial credit, it was pretty funny. <laughs> yes, I'll admit. At the time. I want to bring it back for no reason. I think that would be so fucking <laughs> yes. funny. All right. So we're going to talk to you about some viral challenges and the history of them. So internet challenges are a genre of videos in which users record themselves performing an action, usually daring others to repeat it. They play a role in internet meme culture with many challenges um, challenges turning into ironic memes. <laughs> <laughs> internet challenges are similar to the common children's dare game in which they dare each other to perform an action that one would not normally do. Mm -hmm. Some challenges talk uh, talks predate the internet, some periodically resurface in somewhat different forms. The popularity of internet challenges is explained by people, especially teenagers, need to seek attention and be liked. I know that's true. It's very much, can confirm. Yes. I'm, I'm like, I need more attention. Like my channel's like just completely dying out. I start doing like the cinnamon challenge and like the ice bucket challenge. I would watch that. <laughs> so if you ever run out of ideas, please do do the cinnamon challenge. And many of the challenges can be dangerous. Yes. And then internet challenges refer to a genre of social uh, games in which people record themselves performing. Yeah, performing this. So the popular examples include the cinnamon challenge, the ice bucket challenge, fire challenge. Where people light themselves on fire. <laughs> You're so fun. You remember fire. that? They would just like light their sleeve on fire. Wait, no, is that, are you making that up? No, it's real. Oh, I. They would put like a <laughs> uh, flammable solution on their sleeve and be like, how funny would it be if I fucking took a lighter to it? But who's coming up with that stuff? Probably men. <laughs> it was like, like almost assuredly men. Like there's like complicated, like the ice bucket challenge, at least it was trying to like raise awareness yeah. for like ALS sort and of it's things. It's harmless. Like, oh, cold water. Yeah, and then men are like, what if we just set ourselves on fire? <laughs> We just consider practice, this, I burn. <laughs> consider self-immolation. <laughs> um, the bottle cap challenge and more. I've never heard of the bottle cap challenge. Me either. Let's give it a quick Google. It's like, is that that thing in like elementary school where you get like box tops and then all the kids get to go to Six Flags? If yeah, you get you're enough? just raising money. Oh, that was where you try to, um, you do like a kick around spin and try to kick oh, the bottle yeah, top yeah, yeah. off. It was actually, that was kind of funny because people would record themselves and like grab, <laughs> use their ass cheeks and then like cut back to like their foot, like pretending that they like kicked yeah. it off. Or just completely shatter the glass, yeah. <laughs> like genuinely trying to do it. It just makes a mess. It's like when you see a family set up a pinata inside. You're yeah. like, take it outside. You're like, you guys are just setting yourself up for failure. <laughs> Someone's blindly swinging a bat in your home right next to the 60 inch like uh, TV. <laughs> Wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> mm. Um, so do you want to talk about the origin of viral challenges? Yeah, so we know these as mainly like internet things, mm -hmm. naturally, because it made its way onto this podcast, which yes. is about internet things. But these existed offline prior to its emergence, one of the most famous being the Saltine Challenge. Did you ever do this? Um, no, I've done a, a sister version of it, the Chubby Bunny. Oh, Chubby Bunny's a good yeah. one! Okay, so let me explain. Um, saltine challenge is where participants attempt to consume six saltine crackers in 60 seconds. Now, that seems pretty simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like saltine crackers are pretty small, but it's something about the texture of when you start chewing it. It is so dry. It's so dry, but it also in the back of your throat, it gets really gummy. Mm -hmm. And so you're trying to mix and then you're just, it's one after the other and then it hits 60 seconds. I've seen people do it. Yeah. It is possible. Mm -hmm. You have to have a big fucking mouth. Yeah. It's just like, um, have you ever taken Adderall? 
Yeah. Um, you know, like when you immediately get like cotton mouth. Yeah. And then trying to like make out with someone, but it's just dry. Like that's what it feels like when you eat like six saltines in a minute. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. Cotton mouth to the nth degree. <laughs> yes. Um, this appeared, the saltine cracker challenge appeared in news reports in the 1990s. Mm-hmm. So didn't know that because I did that probably and it made a resurgence in like uh, 2009. Yeah. When I did it, me and my cousins would be like, Do you, we used to upload <laughs> videos to Facebook. Yeah. I'd be like, hey guys, today no guys are watching. <laughs> yes. Not a single guy is watching. I know a lot of you asked me for the saltine challenge. You guys have been in my DMs constantly. <laughs> yes. I was 13. Yeah. August 11th, 1996, the Los Angeles Times reported that professional football player Peyton Manning had attempted the game. Wait, you could it... say that me and Peyton Manning are very similar. Uh, in that... We both did the saltine challenge. Okay, okay. I was like, how many concussions do you have? Uh, we also both have big foreheads and we're white. <laughs> but I like, how did this spread originally? Like, was it just like a child-like playground game that everyone was challenging each other to? Or was it like in the newspaper, you know? How did we find out that Peyton Manning did this? Well, imagine like post game interview with yeah. Peyton Manning. He's talking about like touchdowns and like how he felt about the game. And then an interviewer hands him six saltines. He's <laughs> Can like, you do it? <laughs> now that that's over. Yeah. And Peyton- I, I really don't know because the internet was happening in the late 90s. It's the cringiest sentence yeah, I've ever said. Not like, not like that much video. This is 1996. So there's yeah. like chat rooms. Well, like blogs, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, chat rooms. I don't know. <laughs> Just strangers. <laughs> yes. Can you fit six saltine crackers in your mouth? This is Peyton Manning. I am not lying. <laughs> I am literally doing the saltine challenge right now. Those DMs. This is Kanye West. <laughs> I am not lying. I lost my credit card and require yours. Give me $100 to record my next album. <laughs> yes. Hi, this is Ariana Grande. Yes. So um, the game eventually became popular on YouTube, um, with YouTubers garnering millions of views from participating famously glozel if y'all remember glozel no do you remember glozel green no click on that first link but does she have the green lipstick yeah oh okay yes 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 i know yeah glozel green oh can we talk about this for a second glozel green um colleen ballinger and ariana grande used to be the three best friends really yes dude what the strangest group it's so real and frankie grande her brother used to be like friends with all them too they used to make videos together they used to all be so close (gasps) i don't know what i guess she just kind of like got so busy with being an international superstar yeah oh my god yeah wait she is i'm looking at this picture right now ariana grande and colleen ballinger used to hang out and close out that is so insane to me. Yeah. They, she used to be like a YouTuber. Yeah. Uh, what was her fucking name? I know like Troy Sivan was also like a Troy YouTuber. Troy Sivan was a YouTuber. Shawn Mendes was a Viner. Yeah. Wait, this is like another topic that we wanted to talk about. Like mm-hmm. um, celebrities who like, so there's like a difference between like internet celebrities and then people who are start on the internet and become like huge like household names. Mm-hmm. Cardi B started on Vine. Mm-hmm. A Ho Never Gets Cold was her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Shawn Mendes started on Vine. Yep. Um, Ariana Grande, I guess, started on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Troy Sivan started on YouTube. It's really crazy when people... People take it like f- off the internet and now they they're... managed to forget that's where they came from. Yeah. But that's also, I think, it has to do a lot with when it happened. If mm-hmm. someone, I don't think that could happen today. Really? Like if a TikToker is like, they'll always be known as like a TikToker. Like yeah. that's where they came from. But also, I don't know. I think it's kind of like breaking away from like a Disney label. And I think that mm-hmm. it is possible, like Miley Cyrus or Zendaya. I think um, mm-hmm. like Bella Thorne is probably like how kind of where I think it, like, it doesn't work, you know? Yeah, when they go f- too far pendulum swing the opposite yeah. direction. Well, but Miley did that too. Yeah. With the uh, Wrecking Ball and the mm-hmm. um, Robin Thicke performance and oh, the yeah. Miley Cyrus and her dead pets. She just like went off the rail. I didn't listen to that album. I, I don't know so if bad. anyone did, but like <laughs> she was clearly experiencing something. Yeah. And she needed to make it. Yes, she did. But it's so, so strange to like go back to, even like, I mean, people remember you from Vine, but I would mm-hmm. say more so now, like, YouTube. Yeah. And, like, what we've kind of, this yeah. new era of Sarah Shower. And then for me, people forget that the kombucha meme was me. Yeah. And, like, for Emmy Hartman, too, they forget that her viral video was her. Yeah. You know, it's like you establish yourself online as this person, and the goal is mm-hmm. to distance yourself from what made you yes. viral. Yeah. That is true. It's um, it's very crazy. Like, since I was on Vine and like YouTube and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok, like and now a podcast, all of those are so separate for me. Yeah. Like, I mean, the audiences do overlap generally, but like for the most part, it's crazy. Like, people will know me from certain parts of the internet. I think it's yeah. cool to see how people recognize you. Yeah, because it's like it's almost like they're reading. They're starting on a different chapter of my life. You yeah, know? it's crazy. Which one are you most proud of, Twitter? Um, I and I love Twitter because they've been here the entire time. Because after every like all the videos stuff like i get bored or something yeah. the twitter people are always there they love you yeah love that 
Well, anyway, yeah, Glozell and uh, Ryan Higa, if y'all remember him, did the uh, oh my saltine challenge in 2009, 2010. Yeah. Crazy to think about how that feels like a lifetime ago. I can't. It's kind of funny that like that's a food challenge. Just six saltines. Like yeah. usually when you walk into like a bar or grill, it's like if you can eat like seventeen hot dogs in under big thirty minutes. Fat Daddy Burger. <laughs> it weighs twenty seven pounds. <laughs> you go to Big Fat Daddy Burgers and you're like, if you can eat these six saltines in a minute, we'll put your picture on the wall and you get a free beer. <laughs> it's easier to eat like a rack of like ribs <laughs> than eat like six saltines. <laughs> yes. At least some chits are lubricant. Yes. Slide some meat down my throat easier than a fucking dry saltine. <laughs> so another one <laughs> is um, the cinnamon challenge. Oh my gosh. It's just like cotton mouth. That's yeah. the whole point of it. It just dries out your mouth. I never. Did you ever do the cinnamon challenge? Um, No. I've I seen, never did it. I've seen people do it. It looks because the thing about the cinnamon challenge is that it burns. It burns? Because cinnamon is in that much. And Glozell is, is another famous one that she did. She uses a soup ladle. Oh. You're supposed to do like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, <laughs> enough to like coat your mouth and be like, oh, this is kind of painful. Yeah. She, a whole soup ladle, like that's so much fucking cinnamon. <laughs> it burns your throat. It coats the inside of your throat. So when you try to cough it out, you can't <laughs> inhale too because now yes. you're inhaling cinnamon. It's just like, you know, we went to the moon. Yeah. And we made cars <laughs> and planes. We can fly. And then we do this shit. I feel like both of these challenges could be like, we could just... If you choke someone for 60 seconds and see if they can stay awake the entire time, we could, like, cut the shit. We don't yeah. need to ingest anything anymore. Asphyxiation challenge. Yes. Just get a fucking belt out of the closet <laughs> and then record yourself for 60 seconds. That's the equivalent of what these are. This is the belt challenge. Light yourself on fire yes. challenge. What the fuck are we talking about, dude? Um, so the cinnamon challenge was a popular dare game that involves attempting to swallow a tablespoon of cinnamon without vomiting or inhaling the powder. Um, while the cinnamon challenge became a viral phenomenon on YouTube, its origin precedes the history of the video sharing community. Mm -hmm. The earliest known attempt at the game can be traced back to the cinnamon challenge 2001, which is 1921. 1921. <laughs> During the Great Depression. <laughs> During World War One, the cinnamon challenge made its first. <laughs> and all the people who participated immediately drafted. <laughs> <laughs> it was hosted by Michael Buffington and played by Eric Goodlad. God, I love them. Miss them. <laughs> the result was documented and posted on a blog article on Buffington's blog, and the story was picked up by Jason Cock T Cock Tati. On, Unfortunate last yeah, name. December twenty second, two thousand and one. <sighs> the cinnamon challenge in the post nine eleven world. God. Crazy to think about. I know. Really crazy. I and I this, like, Stanley linked the original blog of it. And it's, like, literally one of those when, like, in college, you're trying to do a research paper and you come across the most obscure websites that are, like, clearly from 2003. Yeah. That's, like, the formatting is so awful. That's literally what this is. <laughs> the fonts in, like, pink. And then, like, most of it's in, like, black. And then there's, like, off to the side, there's, like, a porn ad. Yeah. yeah. And you're, like, trying to cite this as, like, a literary research. Yep. Table of contents. But <laughs> yes. it doesn't work. Yes. The links are broken. And the first, <laughs> but this blog is actually really funny because it it chronicles some fucking dude in uh -huh. their office. <laughs> it's still images of the dude doing the cinnamon challenge. Just like the subject is experiencing mild pain and it's him just vomiting into the trash can. It's, it's actually pretty funny. So actually it is. This guy just looks, it looks like the set of the office. Like yeah. every person here could sell parchment paper mm -hmm. if they wanted to, like, or like paper. And he's just literally over a fucking trash can ingesting cinnamon just vomiting it up oh and there is pictures of his vomiting <laughs> um i would put this on the screen but i don't think that you want it's, yeah no one wants to see that it's just vomit imagine he goes about his day this is what he does on his lunch break that's wild yes. he You're clocks the dude from that blog that vomited cinnamon <laughs> he's a oh celebrity oh my god i love your vomit <laughs> <laughs> love your work dude oh and he like holds up the trash bag at the end to show that he did vomit yeah that's a lot but he came up with this why would you do that i don't know <laughs> Testing the limits of the human body. Yes. This was really a science re science experiment. Um, there is controversy with it, though. Um, mm -hmm. Students sneaking cinnamon-like drugs. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, Pottstown School District declared a ban on students wearing open-top boots like on the Uggs. ground. I bet okay. it was Uggs. That they can be used uh, to smuggle various contrabands, including cinnamon for <laughs> consumption. <laughs> you try to sneak cinnamon into a public high school? You planning to do the cinnamon challenge at lunch and a <laughs> staff member being like, halt! No, this is not it. acceptable. Yeah. But I think this might be Amish country. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, what's going on in Pennsylvania, guys? You guys are making Hershey's chocolate, Amish people. What, um, uh, barns. Trains. Uh, uh, fireplaces. Fire challenge. Fire challenge <laughs> originated a, in a Pennsylvania. a natural spiral. Everything <laughs> yeah, bad yes. has come from Pennsylvania. Yes. Well, I was born in Pennsylvania. Well. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I that's so funny that this school like so usually like dress codes are for like slutty outfits, but the, the dress code is specifically targeting people who smuggle in cinnamon. Don't bring in baking tools yes. and ingredients to school. He has a spatula, and then like security like tackles you. <laughs> twenty three nineteen. Twenty three nineteen. The home ec teacher is just like fired so um, many like things of cinnamon behind her yes. desk confiscated like phones. it's in a locked cabinet <laughs> hey guys Brittany here you guys know i am a fan of fantasy and fun and oh boy do i have a game to share with you Switchcraft is a brand new take on traditional match three games, but as you play, you unlock pieces of a beautiful, magical, whimsical, gripping graphic novel. It's free to download and has a choose your own adventure style narrative, so you'll never be disappointed with the story. I personally love how diverse the characters in Switchcraft are. It makes for a much more interesting storyline with lots of twists and turns. And you all know I'm a sucker for fan fiction and romance, and I love the whole fantasy of it all. In Switchcraft, you take on the role of a witch at Pindle Hill, the world's top academy of witchcraft. It all starts with the disappearance of your best friend. Where did they go? Now it's up to you to unravel the mystery of her disappearance using your magical match three skills. So go and download Switchcraft for free and unlock the magical mystery today. Hello, my dear children. It's me, Brittany. Now listen, I thought I knew my mom better than anyone. But one day we were talking and I heard a story that I've never heard before and it got me wondering... How many other stories do I not know? What broski family lore am I missing out on? So that's why I got my mom StoryWorth. StoryWorth is an online service that helps you and your loved ones connect through sharing stories and memories and preserves them for years to come. How sweet and how smart, right? Every week, StoryWorth emails your mom a thought-provoking question of your choice from a vast pool of possible options. Each unique prompt asks questions you've never thought of, like what's some of the best advice your mother gave you? Or if you were to do it all over, what would you do differently? I've really enjoyed reading my mom's answers to these questions and I've discovered so many stories and like random memories I've never heard about. And I've learned new things about my mom and like really I'm starting to see her as this whole new woman. After one year, StoryWorth compiles all those questions and stories, including photos, into a beautiful keepsake book that the whole family can share for generations. So listen to me. Give all the moms in your life a meaningful gift you'll both cherish for years. StoryWorth. Right now, for a limited time, you'll save $10 on your first purchase when you go to storyworth.com slash VCG. That's S-T-O-R-Y-W-O-R-T-H dot com slash VCG to save $10 on your first purchase. Storyworth.com slash VCG. Thank you. So there were a couple of health concerns um, after this or during this challenge. On April 22nd, 2013, people are still doing the Cinnamon Challenge in 2013. It's not, uh, wow. The results of a study by University of Miami professor Dr. Stephen Lipschultz was published in the monthly medical journal Pediatrics. The report revealed that as Cinnamon Challenge views increased in popularity on YouTube, calls to poison control centers <laughs> and emergency room visits saw a significant increase in frequency as well. I have this um, stepmom character that I really wanted to do. And I literally wrote this out like um, I did like a resume thing for her where like she reviewed her resume and, and it's like for a daycare. And she's like, why do you have poison control on here? It's like, I mean, I'm really good with kids like because you have to deal with kids like a poison control. Yeah. Like, you know what? This didn't come out right, but it's OK. I'm going to keep it in. OK. Yeah. Was that the end of this statement? Yes. Yeah, I realized the joke didn't work as soon as I started saying you it. You know what? It's OK. It's yeah. trial and error. <laughs> yes. And in 2011, the U.S. American Association of Poison Control Centers received uh, received only 51 cinnamon challenge related calls, while in 2012 they, the number jumped to 178 calls, God. with 30 incidences requiring medical attention. Oh my gosh! What can they do? Just drink some water, dude. 
Well, I mean, it's not like, yeah, <laughs> they can't really. They're just like, yeah, you did. It is poisonous. Yeah, it's a spice. <laughs> just drink water and have diarrhea later. At least with like 911, they're going to send someone out. You call poison control. You're like, this is what I did. And they're like, yeah, you are poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing we can do. Like imagine calling the fire department. And you're like, my house is on fire. And then you like show a picture. They're like, it is. Yeah. That's what that is. They said you did that. <laughs> and experiments with rats. This same uh, doctor found that the substance cellulose contained within cinnamon powder can induce pulmonary fibrosis, which is a scarring of the lungs, which causes symptoms similar to emphysema. Oh. And I can almost assure you this is because they were inhaling cinnamon directly into their lungs. Yeah. Also, why? how much cinnamon <laughs> do you have to inhale to like develop pulmonary fibrosis? Yeah. How many times are you doing the cinnamon <laughs> challenge? <laughs> it's, that's your party trick? Yeah. Hey, guys, watch this. <laughs> Fuck. She heard with the goddamn cinnamon again. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Yes. It's the only thing he's good at. <laughs> he didn't go to college. No. And then there's oh this one, the salt and ice challenge. Y'all remember this one? I don't remember this one. The, where they would like intentionally give yourself burns. Oh my gosh! Wait, okay, so this is like a side thing. Mm -hmm. So I used to I used to hang out with my cousins when we were like younger, sure. and my mom was on deployment, and we'd get really sunburnt, and um, we slap do each other. <laughs> We do this really <laughs> fucked up thing where we'd freeze spoons and then you go up to someone who's sunburnt and you hit them with it and then you rip it off and it rips their skin off. What the fuck? So I guess <laughs> I've been doing this before most people. <laughs> the salt from your yes. skin. <laughs> Holy shit. It really, um, it really affected me mentally. Yeah. <laughs> me and my uh, brother used to play a game called You're Sunburnt, I'm Gonna Slap You. Yes. So. I'm gonna rip your skin off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave a handprint on your back. <laughs> and then we document it for our blog. Yep. Yep. Um, so the salt and ice challenge um, is a popular dare game which involves pouring salt on the surface of skin and pressing an ice cube against it to test how long the participant can endure the pain caused by the burn. Now, this is the science of this. I'll be honest, doesn't make sense to me. I know that people put salt on iced roads uh -huh. to melt the ice so you can drive on it. Yes. Don't know why that works, though. Um, well, it's like um, licking a frozen flagpole. Like, it's so dry, it, like, sticks to you, and then you have to, like, rip it off. You know what I'm saying? So you're just recreating, like, a flagpole in your mouth. But it's the... So but nothing sticks. Your tires don't stick to the road. Well, yeah, because they're not made of skin. <laughs> My but, tires are made of human skin. No, I mean, skin. what about salt on ice burns? Well, it just like absorbs the the liquid, because oh. if you put salt in water, it'll boil it faster. Also, like anything, so if you like, if you have, you can't drink salt water from the ocean because you'll get dehydrated. You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's in this Red Bull can. You don't know what I've done. That's just salt water from the ocean. <laughs> Lukewarm. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally going insane because you just keep drinking salt water. Don't tell me what I can and can't do. Yeah, because it absorbs the liquid, it dries it out, and it burns. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now, see, that makes a lot more sense. And that's why salt water in a wound will, will dry it up and bubble it out. Yeah, that's like if you have <laughs> a, a lot of cuts on your body, <laughs> walk into the ocean. <laughs> Jesus. Um, so um, the salt and ice. Okay, so yeah. Online discussions about placing an ice cube over or salt on bare skin date back as early to, as 2005. That is so crazy. Also, Stanley included this link of this the first video uploaded of the salt and ice challenge. This dude literally, it looks, he does it on his arm for like 30, 45 seconds. It literally looks like um, a kinker sore in your mouth. Uh-huh. But it's huge because he did it with like a huge ice cube. Yeah. And I'm just like, why the fuck? Again, like testing the limits of human stupidity. Why would you do that to yourself? I, look, I can hurt myself longer than others. Yeah. It's so, it's literally like, yes. what trophy are you hoping to be awarded? I can't even imagine like a child being impressed. Like, <laughs> oh my God, you got a chemical burn. Well, speaking of children, there's one famous incident of a babysitter that did it to the kid. Oh my God. He was babysitting. In Dumfries, March, 20, March 2013, school officials in Dumfries, Virginia. I went to school in Dumfries, Virginia. No, you didn't. I graduated you know this from person? Forest Park um, in Virginia in uh, 2012, though. Were you um, the person? Wait, I need to find out who it is. Um, found burns similar to those made by the Salt and Ice Challenge on the arms of a nine-year-old female student. It was soon revealed her 21-year-old babysitter, Ke Kedra Smalls. Do you know her? No, I do not. Um, with her, she did the Salt and Ice Challenge with her in late February, which resulted in Smalls' arrest on a felony child abuse charge. Jesus. This why is, would you do that? Why would you do it on someone else? Like, even, oh, even at, like... <laughs> my craziest i why, why would you do it on a child i don't know why would you do, it's like okay 
you know that thing that like challenge that happened like right as the pandemic hit where people were going into grocery stores and like licking the yes. tops that is like biological warfare yeah. like yeah. during a pandemic like um like assault charges are like now worse because if you spit on someone that's also like that is literally biological warfare that is so crazy why would you do it to someone else like how stupid know. can you be well and it's also like oh you're a babysitter you're getting paid for this it's one thing if like it's your siblings and you're like <laughs> give me your arm come here <laughs> And they're like, what? Give your siblings a chemical burn. Yeah, it's funny. Um, <laughs> we'll get better. Skin heals. <laughs> it's like some random stranger's kid that you're yeah. getting paid to watch. I don't know about all that. That's so rude. Do it to your siblings. Do it to your siblings or yourself, not mm-hmm. a child. <laughs> oh, yes. But if your sibling's a child, then. <laughs> <laughs> I think all the time about my, because I'm six and seven years respectively older than my siblings. Yeah. Because I have two half siblings. Mm-hmm. Um. They're like just starting college right now, and I'm a hundred years old. But if that if you're a hundred, I am literally dead. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember literally being in high school. They were in elementary school. And yeah, I would just bully them, <laughs> and they'd bully me back. But like I think about it now, like they were literally children. But and is, I was just slapping them around. Is that because you were bullied at high school and you couldn't like like fight back? So you just went home and like hit your just siblings, wailed on my <laughs> yes. elementary school siblings. No, I was really stop. <laughs> bullied in high school i um my brother was just fucking annoying oh. <laughs> he'd come up and pants me and slap me and i'd do it back to him and he hated it i've um never been pants by a sibling i've definitely given my siblings like wedgies before yeah. that's really funny pantsing and wedgies are incredibly common in my family household <laughs> yes, I so a- i started playing this game called i'm not gonna wear underwear yeah. i'm gonna make it everyone's problem and my brother did it one time and I wouldn't wear an underwear. And he said, Ooh! And I said, learned your fucking lesson. I've definitely, um, my sister's definitely given me, a, oh no, my brother or sister, when I had like a thong on and it just burned my, <gasps> it, it gave me like a little burn mark above my butthole. <laughs> just <laughs> one big hole yes. from front to back. Yes. It's like threading your eyebrows, but with my ass cheeks. Um, our family dynamic is that my brother is a year and a half older than me, and then my younger sister is four years younger than me. Hannah was the, uh, the princess, the golden child, so uh-huh. we didn't really do much to her, and if anything was done to her, it's because my brother and her hung out more. Mm. But I'd say, like, in our earlier years, my brother and I were just, like, dicks to each other. Like, we'd hit yeah. each other with, like, frozen water bottles and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Shit is so painful. I know. <laughs> it's something about the sibling dynamic that you just want to beat the fuck out of them. Isn't it crazy that it's okay to, like, beat your siblings? <laughs> all right moving on (laughs) there's also there's also something called the condom challenge the condom challenge is the name of (laughs) is the name of it's just where you don't catch chlamydia um is the name of two different dare games involving the use of a condom there's two different wait can you talk about two different ones yeah so um also (gasps) just in the same vein oh my god yeah, this one's awful. Oh, no. But also in the same vein of the condom challenge, I dare any straight man to play the condom challenge. Just put wear a condom, condom on. please. Yes. Just put, it's called put on a condom <laughs> and don't take it off. Yes. Um, the condom snorting challenge oh. is really the peak of human innovation. It entails inserting a condom into one's nostril, snorting it back through the throat like a spaghetti noodle and coughing it out of the mouth. I can't even imagine what inspired someone to do this. You're going to taste latex in the back of your throat for the rest of your life. That is so unholy. I guess, I mean, it does connect back there, so it's not that bad. But that, like... Oh. Did you know that your tear ducts also connect the, to your nostrils? So, like, sometimes I'll wake up with black eye boogers. Wait, no, that's because I have eyeliner on. I'll wake up with black no. boogers. And so it's because my eyeliner is going through my tear ducts. Well, every time I get... um. Black boogers, it's because that was like like a smoky bar or something. Oh, I think like, it, I like a nosebleed. <laughs> Bleeding black. <laughs> <Yes>. Anyone <laughs> else blood black? <laughs> Wait, no. I mean, like, um, like when it does dry, it is like blackish. I don't know if that's your eyeliner in your nose. Maybe I'm just bleeding Maybe all the time. Maybe you need to go to fucking <laughs> urgent care immediately. No, but have you ever seen like people um like uh, swallow milk and then it comes out their tear ducts? Nope. Nope, can't say I have. It's because it goes, well, it's up their nose, and then it comes out their tear ducts. Their tear ducts? You're not going to the right bars. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to the smoky bars. I'm going to the milky bars. (laughs) Should open a joint bar, milk and smoke. Oh, wait. (laughs) Milk and smoke. Milk and smoke is a lesbian bar. (laughs) Oh, my God, I would love that. But um, I don't know if you did this when you were younger. I don't know if this is a viral challenge where you have to drink a fuck ton of milk, and then they (laughs) they make you- a banana? Oh, wait, no. Ours was uh, at- 
this church camp in Michigan <laughs> called Big Sandy Camp. It's the first camp I ever held a gun at. Only place I ever held a gun oh, at shit. is a church camp. A Christian camp. Yeah, but um, so you're supposed to, like, the, at my church camp, you were supposed to drink a gallon of milk, and then they made you run four laps, and whoever didn't throw up won... <laughs> won that day oh my god dude we were abused that is quite literally <laughs> i'm gonna make these kids hurt themselves for my enjoyment yeah oh i didn't think about that you Awful. shouldn't be making kids throw up and handle guns um <laughs> 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 oh my god i gotta go get a gallon of milk and then shoot a gun <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> no there was one in high school that was drink a gallon of milk and eat a banana do you remember that no gallon i want it was something like the banana banana milk challenge sounds delicious gallon of milk banana challenge banana sprite ew what the fuck is that let's watch it put it on oh, the and it's immediately someone vomiting so i'm not gonna put that on the screen <laughs> I, just... I don't know what that was i think it was something about like trying to chew after drinking so much milk just made you vomit uh-huh Spent way too much time on that. I'm so. trying to think about is this, but would that be nauseating? <laughs> I, drink, I drink a lot of milk now, but I can eat. But not cow's milk. No. Yeah. It's almond milk. Uh, so this condom snorting challenge, and then there's the condom fill challenge uh, involving filling a condom with water and dropping it on the particular uh, participant heads to test its elasticity. Do you ever watch these on YouTube? Yeah, that's kind of fun. That's like the poop dollar thing. <laughs> So what the fuck is a poop dollar? You wrap a, <laughs> a piece of poop in a dollar, and then you put it on the sidewalk, and then you film it, and people come by trying to pick up the, the dollar, but they just grab it. <laughs> you with the fishing line yes. in the when, bushes. But that was from like a, like that's from a certain like sitcom. Poop dollar. Poop dollar. I think it's like um, Workaholics. Yeah. Oh, That's okay. where it's from. But it's, yeah, it's, the condom field challenge is, like, not as bad as the snorting challenge. <laughs> I think they're both pretty awful. Yeah, I feel like you don't even need the condom part. You could just snort something. Yeah. And you don't, why a spaghetti the, noodle. Yeah. Relatively harmless, yes. right? <laughs> condom. I don't know about that. I remember watching, um, you remember Superfruit? It was no uh, Scott Hoying and Mitch Grassy from Pentatonix, mm -hmm. who I'm friends with now. What the fuck? Hey, Scott. Hey. They did um, a challenge where they sat in the bathtub and tried to do that. And it was just like, it was so fun. Like, this was the innocent, relatively innocent age of YouTube. Yeah. Where it was like full of challenges and great collabs. And yeah. I think collab culture is kind of very strange now. Because mm -hmm. you can tell when people are using each other for yes. views and then when other people just live together. That or when they're really <laughs> friends. Yes. You know what I mean? I know you're big the... I yeah, know. I get it. We are friends. It's a good one. Uh, there's also the cheese slap <laughs> challenge. This my favorite one. Um, the cheese slap is a series of prank videos in which participants take a slice of cheese and slap a person or animal in the face with it. An animal? It's funny. Okay. Um, I promise. It originated on June 9th, uh, 2006. YouTuber Arson62 posted a video titled "The Cheese Incident," and then and I he, am about to play it. He's throwing just cheese at them. My friend Carl from Vine, um, he used to. That was his whole shtick on Vine is that he used to throw cheese at people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is him wetting it. He he's, wets the cheese. He's wetting the craft single so it'll stick better to the <laughs> sleeping subjects. <laughs> it's just truly awful. I think it'd be funnier if, like, he tried it with different types of cheese cuts, like a wedge of cheese. <laughs> Like, just a block of cheddar. <laughs> so, um, and then like ha like shredded cheese. Yeah. <laughs> just... Ew, wetting shredding shredded cheese and throwing it at someone. <laughs> That's actually kind of nice. A little snack. Hey guys, today's episode is sponsored by Honey. I personally online shop every week. One could liken it to an addiction, but often when I'm at checkout, I feel like I don't usually have promo codes available. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, and now that I think about it, I've never visited a website while shopping, and they were not supported by Honey, so that is completely correct. This is how it works. Imagine you're shopping 
depending on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I have saved a lot of money with Honey. I know I just bought a couple sets, tops and bottoms for Coachella, and the website I bought it from was supported by Honey, and I did save like $50, and now at Coachella, I'm going to look like a European man. I'm super excited. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Two billion. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. Come on, get it together, get a grip. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash VCG. That's joinhoney.com slash VCG. There's a mirror variation where you throw cheese in a mirror. I feel like that's, you know. And then there's the pet variation of throwing cheese on a pet. Um, Very funny. Yes. I would do that to Dopey, no offense. But th- but he's not your pet. Yeah, but it'd still be funny he'd to me. He'd eat it, and he'd, he'd <laughs> he would. throw up for the rest of the fucking week. And I would feel bad. And I'd clean it up. And you would, but <laughs> I'd like, feel bad. Oh, damn. And then you'd go into your room, and I'd be like, <laughs> fuck, it's on the carpet. <laughs> um, I made a tweet about two years ago where I said, I want to slap a craft single on Jeff Bezos' bald head. <laughs> Went viral, didn't mean for it to, and it ended up on iFunny, and that's one of the, my most proud moments. Oh my gosh. You ever had a tweet on iFunny? Yeah, um, not vaccinating your kids is known as a fourth term abortion. That was actually before the pandemic. <laughs> that's actually one of the only tweets that my mom agrees with as a super Christian. Really? Yeah, I found out that she has like my notifications on for when I tweet, which is a fucking mistake. That is my personal nightmare. I think she accidentally turned them on. We don't talk that much. But like, so when I did tweet that, I got a call from her like almost immediately. She's like, abortion, Sarah. Really? But you're like, But that was agree? really funny. And then because yeah. like, she's a doctor too. So I was like, yeah, that's funny. Like, yeah, I mean, that was me. <laughs> I think I had another one about like how um, if you're really cheap, the city will bury you for free if they can't identify your body. <laughs> just burn you i saw this tiktok the other day of someone who worked at goodwill and had a vase donated yeah this lady tried to i guess they don't look at what's in the vases it was it an urn it was an urn oh my god ash is still in it and there was a single slip of paper in it that just said marissa lady came to the front and was like um i want this vase but there's some weird powder inside and they dumped it on the counter and just said marissa she was like well can i still buy the vase (laughs) there was like um someone sent us like reaction like after the facebook marketplace episode someone sent me this picture of like um this uh, casket. It was rent to own, and, and, <laughs> oh my God. and it said lightly used. And I was like, "Did they exhume someone?" And then they're reselling it. Hey, caskets are expensive. <laughs> they are. I get it. Caskets are so. I don't even understand why. I it, I think it's they really take advantage of the grieving, mm-hmm. and you really want the best for your lost, you know, relative or whatever. And and so I think it's made with like the best wood and cloth and padding yeah. so they'll be comfortable they're dead yeah they are dead <laughs> i can imagine i mean wood is pretty expensive if you think about like redoing a kitchen yeah and it's like polished and shiny and you're redoing your kitchen you're like speaking of which grandma you're like shit do you this wood <laughs> would be great yes. for the cast yeah. yes. i wonder if we can get a two for one this is beautiful <laughs> and then our the most famous one i feel like we have to talk about the tide pod challenge naturally mm-hmm. this is very millennial um, Tide Pod challenges refer to the dare game involving the consumption of Tide Pods laundry detergent capsules, capsules, um, which are often compared to various fruit flavored snack foods due to their packaging and appearance. Which I, they do. They do look so good. They do look yummy. They look like um, everlasting gobstoppers. And mixed with like gushers. Yeah, I, I, I can understand why you'd want to put one in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, online, the practice of eating Tide Pods is frequently mocked in a similar vein to bleach drinking and the consumption of other poisonous forbidden snacks. Forbidden snacks. I'm trying to think about what is I know I shouldn't drink, but I really, really want to. Drink? Yeah. Gasoline smells pretty good. Yeah. Oh, it does. It smells so... Anytime I drive by like a gas station, I'm like, I really want to drink this right now. Damn, I'm thirsty. Because <laughs> it smells so bad, so good. Yeah. But yeah, people are eating Tide Pods because they're... I feel like they made them like too cute. Well, that, they made them too cute. And there's something about when it's like that gelatin that looks like it's bursting out of the fucking... It's yeah. so juicy. It's bursting out of the plastic. I just want to... <laughs> 
I get it. They're not wrong for you wanting do this? to bite it. I did not do it. <laughs> I did not, and I'm regretting it. I wish I had. I mean, you can still jump on the Tide Pod train. I might go home and go buy some Tide Pods. <laughs> yes. um, you do like a um, speed run of all these challenges. Sorry, it took me a second to think of the word speed. You got it. Okay. In February 2012, the multinational consumer goods corporation Procter & Gamble introduced the Tide Pods laundry deter- detergent packs. According to Consumer Reports, there was an increase in call to poison control <laughs> due to children consuming the product. That is so crazy. Um, Why do kids, their first instinct is, goes in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> toes, feet, babies just sucking on their own toes. Yeah. Like, I just think of, like, the wet Cheetos. Yeah. Everything, they just put their hands in their mouth. Yeah. Into my mouth. <laughs> Tide Pod. Into yes, my mouth. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, again, with poison control. I feel like they're, like, really tired of, like, viral challenges. Yeah, they were booked and busy from 2010 to 2020. They just, like, well, like, finally, the fucking cinnamon challenge is Tide Pods, no! <laughs> Why? Please, God! <laughs> no! Um, on December 4th, 2013, Straight Dope Forums members uh, Silvero Range submitted a post titled uh, People Eating Tide Pods, discussing rumors about people eating the detergent packs. And then on December 8th, 2015, The Onion published an opinion article written from the point of view of a child attempting to eat laundry pods. What does that say? I want to click on it. It's so help me God, I'm going to eat one of those multicolored (laughs) detergent pods. Anyone who knows me will tell you the same thing. I get what I want. Whether it's food, being held, my binky, you name it. If I decide I'd like it, you damn well better believe I don't rest until I get it. (laughs) And from the very second I saw those blue and red detergent pods come out of that shopping bag last week, I knew immediately that come hell or high Um, water, I would eat one of those things. So with God as my witness, I swear to you, I'm going to find that container of multicolored pods. I'm going to take one out. I'm going to shove it in my <laughs> mouth and I'm going to chew it up and swallow it down and nothing and no one is going to stand in my way. That is so. What? OK, is actually is that human nature to just immediately want to when you're a baby, like want to put things in your mouth? I mean, I understand That's what I'm saying. I think it, it like what about it? It's just like I need to suck on it so bad. I can understand maybe like feeling things. And like stepping on them or mm-hmm. like, but what about the mouth that you're like, you see it, you want to put it in your mouth? I think it's uh, sucking on a nipple. <laughs> That's true. Replacing the nipple with a Tide Pod. Yes. An opened Tide Pod. <laughs> oh my God. It is just the need to suck on something. Did you yeah. suck your thumb as a kid? Um, Did I suck my thumb as a kid? No, I was the kid who I used to chew on my hair. So my mom was like, <laughs> okay, <Sorry>. so <laughs> stop, don't judge me. I just know it smelled so bad. Okay, so like I had like bangs and then uh, they, they were just like straight all the way down. And so I took the sides where there weren't bangs and I would chew on them. And my mom's like, if you keep chewing on those, I'm going to cut them off. And oh. I was like, she won't. She cut off <laughs> like just like a full blunt layer all the way around. She gave you a bowl cut. So it looked like stairs. <laughs> so I had like a fucking bowl cut with like extensions and then bangs. I was like, I'm ugly. No, it's giving like Vogue fat. <laughs> And then I was like, you're a fucking idiot because I can also chew on the ends. <laughs> she meanwhile, she just ends up all cutting it all off. <laughs> she gives you a buzz cut over the fucking trash can <laughs> in the backyard. God. I used to I used to suck my thumb. That's why I have really? buck teeth now. Why well, you have buck teeth? Yeah. I have two teeth are a lot. They used to kind of stick out a little bit. Well, how did you get buck teeth by sucking your thumb? Because it halted the growth of my other ones. Oh, wait. You were pushing your like, you were pushing yeah. your thumb forward? Yeah. Oh, I have. Sucking on it. I have like bruxism where I grind my teeth. Ooh. I also, um, what's that thing of where you push your teeth with your tongue? Oh, I don't know, but I do that. I do that too, too, and it's like messing up my teeth. But you have great teeth. I have a gap right over here, so I'm really, I'm really happy that this notice. films my left side. Yeah. Yeah. Really lucked out with that one. Yeah. What's your best, like, better side, right or left? I don't know. Just please don't look at me from the back. <laughs> Just anything but the fucking back. <laughs> when I film myself in a TikTok and I'll set my phone up and I turn around, I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> That is so embarrassing. <laughs> Anyone who's ever had to stand behind me in a line, I'm so fucking sorry, dude. I, I just don't like how my ass looks like a funhouse mirror. <laughs> like, you know, like how um my mom and my dad have great... Oh, this is going to sound really gross. My mom and my dad have great asses. Sure. They're like shelves. But mine like kind of like warps in. Mm. I'm like, why is it this way? Mine is in the shape of a heart. And I have my dad's butt. <laughs> yes. my, it looks like a... All right, let's move on. <laughs> At a funeral one time, my cousin told me I have my father's ass. That's, so that's actually the answer to Trixie's question of where did the hurt begin? <laughs> yes. That's where it began. Um, moving along, uh, there is a lawn, a long um, Tide Pod anime girlfriend. Oh, she's kind of cute. She's super cute. This is a drawing of someone did. She's zero percent edible. Do not eat. She's in a Sailor Moon esque costume that's orange and blue. Mm, cute. 
Really well done, guys. And then people started locking away their Tide Pods. Um, oh, yeah, like at the grocery store, they put them in, like, the little locks and stuff. Yeah, and that's kind that. of annoying. If I go to a grocery store and something is locked up, I'm just not going to do it. Yeah. I have not shaved my legs in so long. I was just about to say they lock up razors for that same reason. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's why I got laser. People tried to eat razors. <laughs> the, so, ra- the razor challenge? The ra- <laughs> chewing on razor blade challenge. Gillette is like, no! Holy, not fuck! Us, no, 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 no! <laughs> Tide actually responded to this whole thing and was like, guys, come on. Yeah. Don't, please don't eat them. And if you do, drink milk and call poison control. Yeah. I imagine this is like, um, these like couple years were like horrible for them. You know, like how Corona's, like the beer is going through like oh, yeah. shit right now. I can imagine Tide was just like, they expanded their, not HR department. Um, PR. PR department. Yes. God, imagine, I feel so bad for Corona. They didn't do nothing. <laughs> They're just trying to get people drunk. The Corona means crown in Spanish. It's like, what a great name for a beer. Yeah. It's so unfortunate. Now they're screwed. God. Um, then there's also government legislation. This happened. <laughs> this got so big on January. I remember this. Really? On January 4th, 2017, Senate Bill S-100A was a, uh, introduced to New York State Senator Brad Holtman, which called on the creation of additional safety regulations for liquid detergent packs. And then like, I'm, why? <laughs> there are people starving and dying in the street. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like politicians who want to say they've gotten stuff done. Right. You know, they can't like try to further any sort of human rights sort of right. thing. It takes like an entire, like your entire term. But by God, we're going to beef up regulations <laughs> on those fucking yes. criminal Tide Pods. I'll do this for the American people. Yes. On February 6, 2018, Holtman and Assembly member um, Aravella Simotas uh, joined a coalition of consumer groups calling on the redesign of the Tide Pods, in which they cited <laughs> upwards of 10,000 incidents involving the detergent through 2017. 20- 2017 stating it's time that you recognize the danger to those least able to protect themselves from a poisonous product package like dude? candy what dude i know that i know that there's a lot of like babies who see it and they're like oh this you know looks good but these people are just actually stupid that is like it's actually laughable like yeah. this is laughable it doesn't you know what? Yeah. Sure, ban Tide Pods, but also healthcare would be nice. <laughs> yes. Could we get some of that too? In the meantime, while you're banning the Tide Pods, you tack that to the end of the bill <laughs> and free healthcare for all. Hey, just <laughs> shove it under their door. So they just had to like. I mean, but the thing is, is they didn't even um, redesign it that well because I buy Tide Pods all the time and they still look like Tide Pods. You're, you're still like, damn. Yeah, we don't even delicious. have that type of washer. Yeah. <laughs> I just. I always they... wondered how those work and how the dishwasher ones work. I think they just explode. I think so too, but yeah. I'm scared that it's gonna like create a mess. I just don't want to deal with it. Okay, I I haven't noticed any like messes. Do you use them in the laundry machine? Um, sometimes. Yeah, I accidentally bought them like when we first moved in. Do Do they work? Um, I don't know. I didn't. <laughs> I just, uh, just big blue and orange splotches yes. on all your clothes. I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, I didn't notice. Like, no one told me I smelled. But then again, we were in the midst of the pandemic, so I didn't like, see anyone. We lost our s- taste and smell. <laughs> yeah, so- you never got COVID. No, I didn't. I did. When? Over Christmas 2020. Okay. I was in Florida. Thank God. You told me that um, a while back, and it scared the shit out of me, because no, I was, was like, we have been si- together. Simply two and a half years ago. Okay. Oh my gosh. Um, there's also the following day, New York Magazine published an article titled New York Lawmakers uh, Want Tide Pots to Look Less Delicious. You hey, make don't them we ugly. All. <laughs> <laughs> make them brown and red. <laughs> Promise I won't want to eat them. <laughs> so, the fire challenge is another one that we mentioned earlier. Um, dare, it's a dare game in which the participant voluntarily sets oneself on fire by applying flammable liquids or igniting combustible parts of one's body and filming the outcome. Arguably, all parts of the body are combustible. Yeah. I mean, if the salt and ice challenge didn't give you enough chemical burns, yeah. this is the traditional burn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just really flay that skin. Who the fuck is like, I want to set myself on fire for a challenge. Evidently lots of people. Imagine going to like a sleepover when you're younger. There's a truth <laughs> or dare. And it's like, truth, do you like Ricky or Dylan? And then dare, set yourself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> you want to impress Samantha so bad? She's the popular girl. Okay. It's like seven minutes in heaven. Like you're like instead of seven minutes in hell. Seven just minutes set, on fire. <laughs> set yourself on fire in yeah. the backyard. Oh, I wanted to kiss someone. I just wanted to be cool. <laughs> yes. I think um, you know, like you ever burned your hair? Yes. It smells so bad. Mm-hmm. I always think about this, and don't take this the wrong way. But I think about what human meat would taste like sometimes. Wait, I think we've all picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all- <laughs> you have mentioned like human meat cookbook in no less than four podcasts. It's actually starting to alarm our YouTube commenters. <laughs> the videos are 
getting flagged. You've know. got to stop. I think about it quite often, mm-hmm. right? I think I could not get past the smell of burning human hair. It smells so fucking bad. Well, then, I, I, okay, I assume you shave your victim before you eat them. No, I wouldn't do that. It's too much work. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Also, I mean, burning hurts like more than like yeah. other types of. Oh, you know what's the worst type of burn? What road rash? You ever seen someone fall off a motorcycle? Oh, and then yeah, they j- with all the like asphalt in it. Yeah. yeah, there was like this Swedish version of jackass where like these guys were like jackass. <laughs> these guys were like worse than the jackass crew. They were riding this like uh, four wheeler, and he had no shirt on, and he's like, <gasps> "All right," and he just flipped it backwards, and he ripped all the skin uh, off of his back, uh, and I was like. Oh my god, you can't even fucking sleep. Uh, you know like when you get like a really bad sunburn at the beach, yeah. you physically cannot sleep. Yeah. It just is so uncomfortable. It really is. Oh god. I hate I hate a fire. I like a burn. I'd rather just get cut up like a million times. I used to think about I I don't know if this is like I talk about this like everybody's thought about this, but evidently maybe not. <laughs> if you Eating had a human to, being again. Okay, gosh, so I'm the fucking weird one talking about human meat. Um also Dobby would taste pretty good. All right, anyway. Oh. Um if you were to die by fire or ice, which one would you prefer? Like if you were to freeze to death or burn to death? I, one would be quicker. I think one would be quicker, but freezing to death would be like, you're just like falling asleep, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Burning to death would just be a fucking nightmare. It would for the whole, however long it takes. And I think also the- um, <laughs> I was going to say, f- Mondays, am I right? Mondays, am I right? <laughs> Me when I eat lasagna. <laughs> this is a picture of you burning to death. <laughs> Um, when you freeze to death, also, what's that thing of like hikers yeah. who die up in the mountains? They are, are found totally naked. Yeah. Because at a certain level, you get so cold that you actually feel hot. Really? And you like strip off all your clothes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, it's like a phenomenon. I know that when you, um, like when you're trying, I learned this from Twilight. If you want to yeah. get warmer, you get naked and cuddle for warmth. Yeah. We should go hiking. <laughs> Sarah has been so criminally horny. Dude, I'm in heat. Like, it's, like, bad. She's outside my door at night just clawing the way Dopey does. <laughs> and then you text me, Sarah, can you come get Dopey? I'm like, Dopey's asleep. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Dopey, get in here. You hear a human, like, standing up. And, like, Your shuffling. knees popping. Yes. Oh, gee, fuck. <laughs> Go back to my room. You've been criminally horny, too. I saw what you posted on TikTok. I have. No, you didn't. Yeah, if, you, I... if you've ever seen anything I posted, no, you haven't. I And also, I hear it sometimes. <laughs> No, I literally, like, yesterday, I, w- I walked into the living room, like, for a brief second. Like, you were in <laughs> sitting in the living room, and then you immediately went live. And I was like, yeah. oh, I just saw. Yeah. Yeah, I did do that. I am, um, I need to be put into a medically induced coma. <laughs> I am so horny. Let's do the fire challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do the fire challenge. help? <laughs> You'll be put into a medically induced coma. <laughs> Fair. I've never heard of this one, the corn drill challenge. Yeah, I've seen this one. They put a corn on the cob on a power drill. Up your ass. Yes. Wait, no. What do Country they do? girls make do. <laughs> what do they do? Wait, okay. So the corn drill challenge is a dare game that involves eating an entire corn on the cob as quickly as possible by sticking it on the end of a power drill and spinning it across one's teeth. I wonder if anyone's fucking teeth were knocked out. Almost assuredly. Oh my god. Uh, why would you do that? Well, videos of people attempting the challenge have been circulating on YouTube as, since as, as early as 2012. It received mass exposure after a Chinese woman failed attempt went viral in May of 2016. I'm scared to open that link. I don't want to open. I, don't I think s- her teeth get knocked out, actually. Oh, my. That's like the worst fucking feeling. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. Um, like your teeth like hurting. I can't. I can't do Because it's mainly like nerve pain. Yeah. And nerve pain, it just drives you insane. Well, that and it's also like if you lose a tooth uh-huh. and it's not because like they're rotting out of your head. Dental insurance does not cover it. That is considered a cosmetic procedure, and it is not covered. I fucking hate dental insurance. I do, too. It's not worth it. I got, like, insur- like health insurance a couple years ago because I had, like, teeth that needed to come out because um, mm-hmm. I smoked. And um, they were like, you're going to have to pay out of pocket for every single dental procedure. I was like, right, why the fuck did I get insurance? Exactly. Because it's not considered, like, a degenerative, generational, like, if your parents' teeth rotted out, so do yours. Like, that's because you did something to yourself, and they're going to make you totally pay for it. That's so rude. It is so fucked up. It's one of my biggest fears. One of my like irrational fears is losing my teeth. Uh huh. And then like, well, that's an anxiety thing. Is it? Oh, I have dreams all the time of my teeth crumbling and like in my mouth and falling out. Yeah, you're having really bad anxiety. Isn't that fun? (laughs) That is so fun. Mm -hmm. That is that's a horrible challenge though. Why would you do this? I don't know. Then the next one is the ball pit challenge. I mean, we could keep going for hours and hours. I kind of want to keep going. The ball pit challenge is um. I remember seeing this on Vine. It's those in like Walmart, the bouncy balls that are in oh, those yeah. like rubber uh, containers. 
and people would climb up into them and then fall and all the balls would come out of the bottom. Yeah. Um, just stupid. But I would just imagine that like the Walmart employees or like the Target employees, like you're not paid enough and you're like, are you fucking serious? I would just be like, oh, guys. <laughs> I imagine like any like Target employee when they see like a YouTuber come in, they're just like, God, yeah, I'm already so close. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Target people. There's oh, and the most famous one ever, <laughs> the Ice Bucket Challenge. Mm-hmm. This one actually did have a purpose, so I don't yeah. feel as bad about this it. This one's good. This yeah. one was harmless. Yeah, they prompted people to go outside before you do it, and it's for a cause. Right. Um, so the Ice Bucket Challenge is a dare game. Why does he keep writing dare game? Because it's the type of oh. challenge um, versus just like... What's a truth game? Like, what's a popular truth game? Would you eat human meat? <laughs> yes or no? All right, They're not, no one's daring you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Ed Gein challenge. Yeah, Ed Gein. <laughs> um, so Ice Bucket Challenge is a dare game in which the participant must pour a bucket of ice water over his or her head and nominate any three individuals to perform the same challenge within the next 24 hours. If a nominee fails to complete the challenge within time, he or she is expected to donate money to the charitable organization, most notably for research and treatment yeah. of um, ALS, otherwise commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Which also... This isn't really accurate because the whole goal was when you get nominated, you donate, and then you nominate three other people to donate. Yeah, because I could. Uh, it seems like, I mean, the viral part, you should like also donate with it. You shouldn't just like pour like water on yourself. And, All right, that's good luck, it, ALS people. Yeah, that's what it turned into on because this was on Facebook. I remember seeing this. People would do this on Facebook, mm-hmm. and I was in early high school at the time and it was really just like a wet t-shirt contest yeah it was like girls nominating other guys like guys and just showing like how hot you look in a fucking wet t-shirt dude no one has ever nominated me for a challenge i'll nominate you for a challenge it's like how i've never been to a wedding or held a baby you never been to a wedding well i went to one wedding like i went to my cousin's wedding when i was like 13 but like i had to leave halfway through because everyone started drinking Mm. and commenting on mine and my father's ass Best to remove yourself from <laughs> <Yes>. that. <laughs> All right. I've, no, but I've never held a baby and I haven't been to a... It's mainly because, like, I'm not close with most of my family. Mm-hmm. And also most of my friends are queer. I was going to say marriage is not really that... Yeah. Yeah. And then the baby thing is, like, I'm not to be trusted. Whatever the fuck that means. Yeah, I can't <laughs> legally be within an elementary school. I'm 20 feet. Whatever. They're like, before I, like, held their baby, I have to put down the ice and, like, the salt. <laughs> <laughs> I have to not be on fire. Whatever. <laughs> I have to put the condom away. Gross. So the next one is um, the Charlie Charlie Challenge. That sounds like, um, what's that game that you play in the bathroom? Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary. That's what it sounds like. It's kind of in the same vein. This is more more my sort of gig. It's a paranormal thing. Okay. The Charlie Charlie Challenge is a game in which participants place two pencils on top of a piece of paper with the alternating words yes and no written in a two by two grid. If the top pencil moves toward the word yes after chanting the phrase, Charlie, Charlie, can we play? Um, or Charlie, Charlie, are you here? It's assumed that a Mexican demon named Charlie has been summoned to answer uh-huh. other questions. And to end the game, players chant the phrase, Charlie, Charlie, can we stop? <laughs> Which, I hate that so much. I think it's like... Um... I think it's like funny to think that you play this game that grounds just on level beneath you <laughs> and you think that spirits are talking to you. Someone's breathing really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving the pencil. Grandma's mouth breathing. <laughs> Grandma, we're trying to summon. Grandma, shut the fuck up. Jeez, oh, you ruin everything. Yeah. <laughs> hate playing games with Grandma. <laughs> you ever done a Ouija board? Um, No, I'm too scared. Me I can't fuck with it. Me so either. like being raised super Christian, I yep. can't fuck with spirits. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I, that's my residual Christianity still in me. Where hey. like... Dude, any scary movie that's about demons, I yeah. cannot watch it. Oh, I can't either. Yeah. I can't. It, free, it actually, I don't know what it is that's so, it's like a, such a deep-rooted fear yeah. that I, even in this post-Christian phase that I think we're both in, yeah. of like we recognize how harmful a lot of the Christian church can be. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever not be afraid of like demons. Well, do you think that's like, you know, like we talk about like religious trauma? Like, do you think that that's religious trauma? Because like I, like it's uh, similar to like this is going to get dark. Like, if there's, like, an assault scene and women watching it are like, hey, you don't really need that in a movie. It's yeah. because we have this, like, we, it's a real rational fear for us. Yeah. So I think maybe, it, like, in a similar way, like, since we have religious trauma from religious extremism, we physically cannot watch, like, anything with, like, demons. Yeah. And maybe I it's just, like, it, triggering. what it really is, and also with the assault example, is that, like, you truly, genuinely have no control in that situation. Like, when you're dealing with something that's Mm otherworldly or 
especially a, a lot of that is based in like Catholicism, which yeah. I know nothing about. And so even my mom is a ghost hunter and she'll go in and like when she's trying to cleanse a space or whatever, she'll say Catholic prayers like uh -huh. to, you know, Archangel Gabriel or whatever. Like there's something I just it seems a little too real, yeah. even though it's very like girl. A demon. Uh, yeah, it does. It, it's just like too real. It's like 18 years of like talking about like demons and hell that I just I can't even think about them. Like, I'm glad you feel the same because I always feel so dumb when I'm like, I'm afraid of oh, and all those movies make it seem so real. The yeah. exorcism movies like and all the, that. Oh, possession scare me. Like scare the <laughs> fuck out like, of me. Genuinely so scary. Yeah. But it also kind of makes me think about like what is possession and what is someone who may be mentally ill? Right. You ever think about like that, like back in the day, like how they would try to like cast out demons from someone? Oh, yeah. Cast out homosexuality from people. Yeah. Yeah. It's very much... I, th I think that um, the modern Hollywood exorcism movie is they've tapped into like actually what's scary. Yeah. You know, where like they know the demon's name or it's like a little girl and it speaks in a man's voice. Shit mm -hmm. like that where it's like, come on, dude. Yeah. That's really fucking scary. I don't know. I get like worried. Like what if I ever became like a ghost? I'm like scared. Like will I like will I exist in what I'm wearing for the rest of eternity. That's what you're afraid of? Well, I mean, like, if I don't have makeup on... You're like, my hair's kind of greasy. I look... Like, if someone, like, manages to summon me and mm. I, like, my eyeliner is smeared from crying right before I died, right. I'm like, I'm, I, I swear I look better. You don't get to, like, pick your yeah. outfit like a video game? There's no Ulta in the afterlife. I just <laughs> yeah. kind of, like, I'm stuck like this. I don't know. You don't How really did, think about that? I Yeah, I don't really want to think about it, but it's also like, because I know that that's probably true. Mm -hmm. How they, when people die or if it's un, unfortunate circumstances or whatever, like if they died in a place, like they're always going to be stuck to that place yeah. or in that outfit. So yeah, I think you're right. That's, that's it's sucks. a valid fear. <laughs> it's a very valid. Instead of just dying, it's like, am I going to have to wear this these jorts for all of eternity? <laughs> No, I, I'm going to be this weight for the rest of my life, <laughs> for the rest of my afterlife. Like, I'm like, I hate my back profile. So whenever I haunt people, I'm like, don't get behind me. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> you just hover over them like this. You follow them around like this. <laughs> Awful. There's also this one, the Kylie Jenner lip challenge. Um, what is, uh, that's the one where people sucked on like a shot glass. Yeah. And then it made their lips huge. Yeah. I mean, that, that wasn't that bad. I think it just bursts some blood vessels in people's face. Is that what happens? Um, I mean, like, you suck long enough. It's like giving yourself a hickey on your lips. <gasps> you ever gotten a hickey? Yeah. <laughs> One time when I was younger, I gave this guy so many hickeys on his <laughs> neck that he walked into school and everyone thought he had a disease. <laughs> and it literally looked like he took, like, so many paintballs to the neck. <laughs> He looked Did so someone try to choke you, dude? <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, it looked like spotted, like black and blue all over his neck. Why were you sucking on his jugular? I, I mean, I was I was raised super Christian. Yeah. I didn't know how to turn someone on. Yeah, that's fair. You ever made someone come in their pants? Um, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> this is a hard laugh. I'm, I'm like, let me think. No. But one time a dude gave me so many hickeys, it was so embarrassing. I had to come home to like my parents' house. <laughs> and it literally was like... It was all around my neck, like on the, on the back, back of, of your on neck, on the back of my neck. Like it was so like it looked like I had been a victim of abuse. Like yeah. it was awful. <laughs> I would wear turtlenecks. It was summer. It's, just... it's fucking awful. That shit's humiliating. Don't <laughs> give people hickeys. <laughs> like, Grow up. I, I, um, I don't think I've gotten a hickey like the, I think I got a hickey a couple years ago, but I haven't gotten one since. And that spoon trick doesn't work. The what spoon? The frozen trick? spoon. And oh. it's supposed to, like, make the color not there. <laughs> it just makes it worse. Rips off your skin. Yeah, it rips off your skin. Now God it's just damn exposed it. muscle <laughs> yes. on your neck. But then there was also that, like, people used to say, like, they, like, burn themselves with a curling iron. It's like, how shit are you at curling your fucking hair? Yeah. It's all around your neck. <laughs> are you resting the curling iron on your skin when you're, like, holding it? Why is it purple? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, okay, so that was the Kylie Jenner challenge. I remember seeing that and just like, mm -hmm. it really just makes me more sad than anything where it's like people want big lips so bad. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind bigger lips. I wouldn't mind a bigger top lip. Mm. Like I, I don't want um, injections, but I want a lip lift. So they cut yeah, off the lip flip. Yeah. They cut off a little bit of skin underneath your nose and then they just pull it up ever so slightly. Jeez. And so it looks like you're like kind of pouting. Because with the way that Botox and like fillers like shift on people, yeah. I'm scared like I'll have like a really weird looking mouth. Oh, I hate when you see the like Bosch lip filler, but it's not even Bosch. It's just because like you've put something in your face and your face moves a lot. Yeah, like migrated. Yeah. <laughs> the next one, speaking of beauty standards, is the don't judge challenge. This was on 
musically. Oh no! Oh fuck this! This was also on Vine. This was everywhere, it and was... it really is just a mm. glow up thirst trap. It's the classic glow up thirst trap. Yeah, video. It's... It's like, you know, when people like would fill in their, like they'd make a unibrow, they'd yeah. draw like moles all over their face. They put hair, like some of yeah. black out one of their teeth. Yeah. And then they're just like, I'm so ugly. I'm so, and then there's like a transition and now they're like hot. Yeah. It's like, who would have thought? Oh, who would have thunk it? <laughs> that you don't actually look like that. <laughs> you don't actually have a sharpied unibrow. <laughs> yes. I've, um, I didn't do that even on Vine. I, I never did this. Like the chal- the don't judge challenge, but I definitely do on TikTok. I feel like it's just kind of part of social media culture of like the transition videos are cool oh, yeah. now. Yeah. But it's not like, look how ugly I am. It's yeah. like, look at how good I am at makeup mainly. Yeah. And I love those. I love seeing how inventive makeup looks can be and how I love seeing a good like, um, not transition, transformation video. Yeah. Love that. I do too. I also think it's funny when someone puts something on one of their teeth. You know, they you have, know? like, a big piece of, like, spinach. And they're oh, just like, yeah. this is the pinnacle of comedy. I'm like, you know what, bud? It is. Yeah. That is my farting joke. Yeah. Putting a, something over your fucking teeth. I'll, I'll let out a giggle. <laughs> a little <laughs> chuckle. No, it's... I, I thought you were saying that you'll do that for me. Like, you're going to go home. Hey, Sarah. Oh, she's got uh, peanuts in her mouth. Here, check this out. <laughs> I did that on TikTok a few nights ago. I put a piece of boba on my tooth and I say, hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> People love it. If you've tapped into like the root of comedy. Yeah, but you should put it like a hashtag like don't judge challenge. Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. No, but in every single one of your <laughs> captions is don't judge challenge. Because it actually would be a challenge for our audiences not to judge. It would. Hey, <laughs> don't say anything negative about my appearance challenge. They're physically like shaking. <laughs> it like is a challenge. Home. Yeah, that's the real challenge. I Keep am- your thoughts to yourself online. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've never heard of the rest of these. The 3 a.m. challenge. Me either. I remember the uh, 20, well, the 24-hour fort challenge. That was a YouTube thing. 24-hour fort challenge? Yeah, the 24 hours. I, I spent 24 hours in blank. Or like people would camp out in Walmart. Yeah. Like in the, So just breaking and entering? Yeah. Once you're done setting yourself on fire and burning children, yeah. you just break and enter in a Walmart. Yeah, you go and sleep in a Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Try to really flush out your rap sheet. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> you go sleep in a Walmart. <laughs> All right, let's try some non-violent crimes. <laughs> oh, that is so stupid. This reminds me of what's that movie where um her her daughter's name is Americus or her name is Americus. It's with Natalie Portman where she's like oh, no um idea. Star Wars. She <laughs> sleeps in a in a Walmart. Wait, wait, wait. Natalie. I keep mixing up Natalie Portman and Kira Knightley. Everyone does. Everyone always has. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, it's called Where the Heart Is. She, like, basically sleeps in a Walmart while she's she pregnant. Homeless? Yeah. Oh, so it's actually, sad. It's actually, no, but it's really good. She ends up with, like, uh, building a house and, like, making a business. How'd she make money? She, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it since 2000. Oh. It was one of the only movies, like, DVDs in our RV. So I watched that, uh, Spanglish, and the movie RV um, every other day because we didn't have... It was before the internet, so I just I memorized those three fucking movies. We had a similar thing. We had a big conversion van Yeah. because we had a family of five. Yes. So road trips, because my parents were my mom was cheap, so we would never fly five people. Also, flying <laughs> with children is just like, don't do it. Mm-hmm. So we would drive cross, cross country from... Wherever the fuck we were living, Texas to Maryland to go see our grandparents. And in our van, we had uh, all of the Veggie Tales. Yeah. Uh, Disney Princess Sing Along and um, Indiana Jones. <laughs> so that was uh, the trifecta. Yeah. That was similar to yours. Oh, that is so interesting. RV is a great movie to watch in an RV. It really is. It Love also, Robin Williams. The, like that family dynamic is exactly how mine was um, at certain points in my life. <laughs> <laughs> They're not fun. Like it's usually not fun, but they were like that sometimes. Fun. Yeah. Hold on to those good memories. Yeah. Um, and then there's also the get out challenge, um, which refers to get out. But then there's the bir- bird box challenge, which is just people trying to do stuff blindfolded, like the Sandra Bullock movie on Netflix. I've never seen that movie. It's good. Really? I enjoyed it. Is that the one where they can't speak or else they're gonna get like attacked? They can't look oh. at people. All right, so um, in conclusion, there are a lot of viral challenges. I don't they're all know. awful. They're, they're all awful. I think the ALS, when they're for used for good, they're like but not. But they weren't, were they? I mean, I don't know how much was raised for ALS, uh, ALS but I assume it's like good. Fair. Um, but well, there's going to be one where it's like chainsaw challenge. Like recreate uh, medieval births. 
<laughs> Midwife challenge. <Yeah. laughs> Human meat challenge. Uh, hey. <laughs> Who started that one? <laughs> Brittany's like, all right, I'll go first. <laughs> Just... I was nominated by an anonymous source. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I get like industrial locks on my door. <laughs> Like, don't be safe. I don't. Cat meat probably tastes fucking awful. I'm talking about for me. No, I know, but don't be safe. <laughs> so, um, Stanley says there's an insane amount of internet challenges, and you can go on forever. You can really like there are so many, so many challenges. Yeah. With this, but I think that I kind of do want to do one one day, just what to say do? that I've done it. Um, probably the saltine one. <laughs> we should do that for a video. <laughs> we just go home and do it. Let's re- do it. All right, and then what's the rest of the video? It's just like 15 minutes of us choking. Yeah, people love that shit. <laughs> People love watching us almost die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's it for this week, guys. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to like, like, sub- comment, s- subscribe, subscribe, download, rate five stars on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Apple, uh, Apple, Apple, any place you get your podcasts. Yeah. And subscribe to our YouTube. We have a YouTube channel where you can watch this in real time. Yeah. You can see our shiny white faces. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you guys so much. And we will talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.